What's going on people? This is Phonetics. Today I'm going to talk to you about loop points. Why in 2018 you would want to use a loop point, how to create one uh, using an audio editor and implementing that loop point in a sampler channel in your door. Um, I'm going to I'm going to utilize uh, FL Studio and SoundForge to demonstrate what I'm talking about. But please don't be perturbed if your setup is different because the principles on which I'm going to draw will cross over uh, into onto, onto many uh, any other platform. Uh, really, but you know uh, you, you may not be using SoundForge. You may be using WaveLab, Peak or Audacity or similar. You may not be using FL Studio. You may be using Cubase, Reason, Logic. Uh, it doesn't matter. The principles uh, which I'm drawing on stem from the hardware days when people were using uh, samplers such as the Akai S3000 uh, and taking short snippets of audio and manipulating them in ways uh, that they could use them for instrumentation because they didn't have access to the plethora of sound banks um, and, and romplers uh, that we have these days with, with vast libraries of sounds. Um, now, in, in terms of why you may wish to use a loop point, um, there's a distinction to make. Uh, many of the synthesizers these days use um, waveform uh, wave um, as, as templates from which you can build a sound from the ground up. Um, and, and you can effectively take a, a waveform, much like you're looking at on the screen in front of you at the moment, manipulate it in all kinds of ways with filters, LFOs. Um, you know, I'm thinking in, in my mind at the moment, I've got the, the setup of Massive in my head and the way you can root all, all the different aspects together and you can create some really distinctive and, and unique uh, material. That isn't what I want to talk about. You know, in terms of loop points, what I want to talk about is um, a scenario where um, you may have a one-shot bass sample, um, but you don't want to use it um, in the sense that I've just used it there because you can clearly hear that it's a sample that be, that's being pitched up and down as it as it plays back. You may want to, to, to give the impression that you have see, you, you've synthesized that sound from scratch. It may be that you don't have access to a synthesizer. It may simply be that you really like that one shot bass sample that you couldn't quite recreate it um, when you tried and you're thinking, well, I've got the sample there, why not? Why not use it rather than uh, wasting my time and, and not getting anywhere? It may be, um, and I'm not saying this is what I've done in this instance, that you heard a bass sound that you liked from one of your favourite artists on one of their tracks and it just so happened that that one shot was available for pinching uh, and, and similarly you have been able to recreate it or you just like the timbre and the texture of it uh, and you want to use it um, in your own productions. So if that is the scenario and you're, and you're wishing to do something you know, fairly simple, uh, which in the hardware days would have taken you a long time, but it's going to take you moments when I show you how to do this. Um, this is what you are going to want to do. So you've got this one shot bass sample here, and this is the original. I'm going to quickly kind of bounce back a little bit, rewind, because you need to understand the principles of, of, of sample editing before you can create a loop point effectively. Um, now here is a, a synthesized sine wave and what you're looking at is one cycle. Um, so if I play that back looped, uh, you're going to hear the sine tone. Quite a pure tone. Um, now when you're creating a, a loop point, it's, it's, it's similar in, in the terms of um, if you want to cut a sample, you're going to want to aim to cut it around about 0 dB uh, because if you um, if you were to cut it here um, then, then then when you play it back you will hear a click so so the closer you are to the middle line on your screen um, the better that you know the better that bodes uh, for your end product and the same thing applies to loop points uh, what you're going to want to do is find um, an entire cycle so if I if I zoom in on the start you'll see that it's at 0 dB it, the sine tone raises up comes back down through it, back to the beginning. And that's what gives it that complete sound so that when you play it back, you're getting the impression of the pure tone as if you were playing it from a synthesizer. Now, with all that said, you're gonna to wanna to look at your, your one-shot bass sample and you're, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. So you're gonna to wanna to find part of the waveform um, which, um, which creates, which is effectively one cycle. And then you're gonna to try to, to, to start a loop point at zero 
um, and, and end it at the same place. Now I've actually, I've already done this um, uh, just, just to kind of speed things up with this example. Um, so if I highlight this section here and play it back, you're gonna hear that bass tone that I was using, but as if I sequenced, uh, synthesized it from scratch. Helps if I've got the loop switched on. Okay, so how I did that was I highlighted the, the, the I mean, this is this is obviously specific to SoundForge, but it's gonna work similarly regardless of which um, ed editor you're using. I've highlighted the part um, that I wanted to use and I've gone to insert sample loop. Simple as that. I've actually, that sample is the exact same sample that I've got loaded into Fruity uh, to FL Studio already. So the loop point you will see, the exact same loop point. Is, is highlighted there. And if I switch that on and, and, and play back the pattern that I was showing you a moment ago, you will hear that all of a sudden the notes aren't playing very crisp and short and staccato. They're, they're, they're legato, they, they, they lead into the next one. So as a listener, listening to that, you wouldn't necessarily twig that somebody had just pinched that tone from, uh, from elsewhere or, or used um, a one-shot bass sample. Um, there's a further part to this in that when I play that back, you will hear that, that you've got the attack and decay of the original sample still. Um, it starts off louder, it, it dulls down slightly and then loops at this point at the end where it's a little bit quieter but it may be that you don't want the 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 original um the, the, the original adsr the attack decay sustain release the the envelope the volume envelope of of, of your sound um, it may be that you just simply want to use one cycle which i've done here and this is all this is is, is this uh, this section here copied and pasted onto a new file um, with with a loop, the loop point, the original loop point intact. So I'm going to load that um, into the same channel. And I'm going to play it back, and it's going to sound similar, but you're not. It's not going to have that peak um, as as it hits. Now this is how um, many of the, the the original dance tracks using the the, the sampler, such as the Akai S3000, would have worked because you wouldn't have had that one shot. You, in some contexts, in some instances, you just literally had uh, the sine wave, for instance, or the square wave. It had it had a load of presets built into it, and it was just one cycle which you could do what you want with. Um, the beauty of this is that obviously you've got that kind of warm tone of the original sample that you, you were listening to, uh, but you can either use it as is or you can use it as a starting point uh, and start manipulating it. Um, so I'm just going to mess around with the filter quickly. Um, I'm not going to do anything particularly special. We're going to kind of make this, this sound warp slightly. <laughs> That's just an example of what you could do if you started messing around. You could do all sorts. You could start messing around with LFOs uh, and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, I would suggest if you wanted to get into the realms of being really creative though, uh, you're probably gonna end up using one of the synthesizers which enables you to, to, to do so. But in essence, um, what I've just shown you there is a very quick means of taking a one-shot sample um, and manipulating it and, and, and utilizing it in a way which enables you to do all manner um, of things with it as if it were um, directly from a synthesizer. Now it's, wor it's worth pointing out, and, and you know, I would go back to the example with the sine wave, um, that if you've got a one-shot sample with a massively wide stereo image with lots of panning going on, uh, with loads of crazy filters, um, this is gonna be difficult to replicate because if you, if you load up a very complex sound in your editor, you're gonna to struggle to find, especially if it's a stereo sound, you're gonna to struggle to find um, a sort of a direct, a, a loop, like a cycle like this, where the points go through the middle, uh, where you're not getting clicking or where it's not introducing artifacts. And in fact, if you look at uh, the, the, the sample that I've used here, this bass, um, it's, it's a very simple waveform and that's why it's been easy to manipulate in this manner. If you take something that's a lot more complex, uh, you may find difficulty uh, surely doing what we've just done, but that's not to dissuade you from doing it. Um, it those little clicks, those glitches, the fact that it's not um, a, a simple waveform can actually lead you to down to some 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 quite creative um, avenues and, and allow you to do some interesting things. Um, so so by all means, give it a go. Um, 
I think that just about sums up everything uh, I wanted to get across here um, and, and, and I hope that's been of use to you. Uh, it's something which I've used over the years um, and uh, it's, uh, it's a very useful tool.